Ta'alo for everyone. Welcome back to another episode of Behind the Lava Lava. We are Fiat Poco Samoan veterans who talk about topics surrounding the Samoan culture and life. I'm your host, Michael Tan, and here with me today are Milford Tiafala and Johnny Suolevai. If you want to hear more content like this, be sure to follow and listen on Spotify or wherever you get your podcasts from. We are also available on YouTube, Facebook, and I hope you enjoy this episode. But before we get straight into it, I want to introduce our guests. Today we have Thomas Fadiliu, who owns a business. Thomas, please briefly introduce yourself. Hey, it's Thomas Fadiliu here, man, uh, out of Mapleton, Utah. Business is called All Pro Concrete Cutters. So I want to change the format of our podcast session today. I want to open up with a icebreaker question. And today's question is, what is your proudest moment and i'm gonna start i started off since i brought it up what is your promise one of your proudest moments in your life so uh other than graduating from high school graduating from the marine corps i believe one of my my proudest moment happened in 2019 when i um decided at 300 pounds to run the 2019 super spartan race so that's about a 10k race with about 25 obstacle, obstacle courses. Uh, this was up in Huntsville, Utah, which is pretty much uh, mountainous terrain. And for me, that was a big accomplishment, you know, for someone big like me. Um, at the time, I was very motivated. I ran with these group of extremely fit individuals who who continued to egg me on. And that was one of the proudest moments of my life and it will continue to stay with me and 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 i believe i have my medal here to show our listeners i'm a super spartan runner and that's the first and the last time i'm ever going to do something crazy like that well, i guess i could chime in on that one um obviously for me i was uh the day i became a father i met my wife we were going to have a baby and came with a bonus kid. And so the day I decided to marry my wife was the day I became a father. And it was one of the greatest days of my life. And then continue to have three more. So having four girls, each and in, each individual birth, each individual milestone from rolling over to crawling to first day of kindergarten to first day of elementary, first day of uh, junior high sports, all that stuff. It's been, it's been a wild ride. Pretty easy, cut and dry answer. It's, it's, it's uh, yeah, that's mine. Getting my credit score from the five hundos to seven hundreds. Yeah. Yeah. Now <laughs> those type of things, I can't really put one over another because sentimentally i don't know i just you know different moods every day and and i'm always grateful for moments that happen like that but i say every day i'm i'm proud to you know see my my kids do something that they struggle with you know learn something new or are improved upon something or even as a coach you know i love i love seeing people learn and become better every day and i, I become proud when i i know i help them realize what they can do not that I'm the one, you know, who showed them, but just mainly helping them come to that realization that they can do things. Yeah. And I'm proud of that every day. Man, just to chime in as well. And then uh, just like Johnny said, man, being a father was, and also, man, T, uh, being a father was one of the proudest moments of my life. 2018 was that proudest moment, you know. And then the second biggest proudest moment was me actually – being the first, pro, you know, Polynesian concrete cutter in the USA to, you know, like to start off and, and to branch off on my own and and to be a legit company man and, and to represent, you know, my culture and, and to be out here and just show our, our kids and, and, and our families that man, it's possible. You know, that's one of the proudest moments is to, you know, be that front runner and to pass the knowledge on to, you know, our kids and, you know, our family. So, so that they can have that opportunity as well. So 
that's one of the second most proudest moments of my life. So, yeah. So I think you guys cheated and got very sentimental on this. It's not one cheating, of, man. It's yeah, the truth. It, it, you're kind of you're kind of cheating on this. One one of <laughs> my proudest moments for this podcast is being able to be in a relationship with one great company, and that company is called Matai Watches, and we just happen to be an authorized seller of this watch. So if you want to purchase this watch. We have a link on our website. Get it for Hell Christmas. Yeah. Get that plug in. Get, it get for, that plug get, in. Get it for your loved ones. And this is the first, first Samoan, or if I say first Pacific watch. This is from Matai watches. So, so let's get straight into it. Thomas, can you tell us about your business? Yeah, Thomas Paliliu here, man. Uh, I live in Maple Ten. Our company is based out of Maple Ten. What we do is concrete cutting. We uh, specifically are traded to do just that. We don't pour concrete. We don't, uh, you know, we don't do any finishing work. We come and we do a lot of cleanup work. So a lot of the guys that you see in the business, especially the Tungans here in Utah, if they need a walkout basement or if they over pour it on concrete where the level's too high, we come to cut it to level and cut it to grade it. So, yeah, we do a lot of highway jobs as well so if you see a lot of those cutters on the highway uh with those big walk behind saws that's us man that's that's who we are we uh we come and cut those asphalts uh relief so that they can actually extend the highway and the stem road so that's that's pretty much you know concrete cut it to a t so we uh it's a lot of dirty work it's real dirty man especially in the cold we're asked to do things that we don't want to be doing, especially in the like 10 degree weather, man. But uh, we're the only, there's only, I say about 10 of us in the state that are legitimate, that are constantly on the go and working. And, and so I'm striving to be like one of the top guys out there in, uh, in Utah. So that's a little bit about my business and what I do. And how did you first start? Were you working under someone first? Be, well, getting that this experience before you started your own contracting business? Yeah. Yeah. I was working for a company called All Cuts Concrete and they're actually local in Mapleton. So now they're my competitors. <laughs> so, uh, uh, they're local, man. And, uh, uh, the owner of the company, Mike Rogers, man, gave, in, gave me an opportunity a few years back. I was working at, uh, Nestle. I don't know if you guys heard of Nestle. Uh, so it was a factory up in Springville. I was working there and I was thinking to myself, man, I do not want to be here and doing this the rest of my life. And I've always thought of going into the construction world because I've done it, you know, a little bit on my mission. Um, so I was like, when this guy, he's my neighbor. So when he gave me an opportunity, I said, man, I can't, I can't let that pass up. So I, I learned the concrete cutting world from all cuts concrete. So. And is there a main reason why you decided to go independent? Like your your motivation as to why you decided to go solo? Yeah. Um, when I got introduced into this concrete cutting world, it was different. It was different from the the yate work that these Tungians do all the time. You know, it was way different. And I had, you know, some of my guys that I served my mission with in Australia. So they moved from Tonga to Australia and I saw them cutting concrete. And I was like, man, this is big. This is a big trade industry. Like, um, I need to tap into it. So when I got involved in it and I started learning the trade and learning how to cut, I figured, let me be the first to put myself in the situation where I can be the first Polynesian concrete cutting business and a legitimate one. And so, and that was, that wasn't just my motivation. My motivation was my family, you know, like I, I wanted to retire my wife and I was able to. And so, and then I wanted to put my, my family in a position where all the stuff I grew up in, you know, like wanting and wanting the resources and all that stuff, my daughter and my son now has those things. So that was one of the main, main reasons of why I did what I did. And would you say that the business you're in, there's a lot of Polynesians, like Tongans, Samoans involved in this business? Because that's that's something that I've noticed 
is Polynesians working here in Utah. Um, there's also California working in concrete, the landscape and construction business. business. And there's a lot. There's a lot. There's a lot of cousins, uh, family members that are all working. And you know what? You know, the unique part of it, man, and, and this, you know, just just a little bit about of how I got started. So I, I started my little construction knowledge in Tonga. So I served my mission, my LDS mission in Tonga for two years, 2006 to 2008. And uh, when I when I came back, I wanted to do that. But there wasn't any opportunities in California because I didn't know a lot of guys. But here in Utah, like, it's crazy that you will see this one family who you know, and everybody's tied to that family. And that family's helped a lot of other families grow and build. And so when I saw that, that was one of the things that made me so, like, intrigued in what I was doing because I was like, man, I want to be this just like that. I don't want to be acknowledged that I was the first. I want to be the one that can help my brothers and sisters, man, like get to that point of in this world, right? In this trade and help build them up and, and let them go and, 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 and have a successful career in this industry. So yeah, that was it. And, um, are you able to, if you, if you want to, are you able to talk about the finance, the expenses side? Because I see that one of your blades is actually like a, your one of your uh, cutting blades is one is actually like one of my paychecks, right? Could you speak on that <laughs> aspects, the, the expenses? Cause it's not something that people can just jump into. Like it would require like a big loan to get into a business like this. Yeah. Um, one of the things, the challenges in this game, and this is why a lot of Polynesians, like I spoke to a lot of my friends in Australia, is the reason why they didn't start their own um, is because of the expense, the finances, and the amount of money that goes in. So just to answer your question on that blade, that blade is a much smaller blade that you see, and that's a $1,500 blade. So it's it's just crazy how in this industry there's, there's, you got framers, you got plumbers, and you think to yourself, man, concrete cutters, yeah, I can do the same thing. Uh, until you see the money and the amount of money, you know, the, the cost that goes with these tools, it's scary to get involved. Yeah, I was going to chime in on, because uh, obviously with being specialized as a concrete cutter, I'm pretty sure there's going to be quite a bit of capital to go into getting those specialized tools. And from, I've seen some of your, I mean, I was creeping on some of your page, or on your page, your business page. And seeing some of the equipment that you have, even for that mounted saw that you had, where it's mounted on that level guiding system or whatever. Right. And uh, I've seen some of those before in construction sites, and those blades are pretty huge. You're cutting pretty deep, like at least three, four feet in concrete like that. So, I mean, obviously, to get specialized equipment like that, and it's going to be more than just doing something regular like framing where you, know, you got your lumber and stuff like that. But, but I guess in, in, in the short term of it, though, it's you're just buying equipment. You're cutting other people's mistakes. <laughs> you don't have to buy the, the, the concrete yourself. You don't have to get the, the screws and nails and whatnot. But, yeah, so, like, I guess my question was just, just like, did you go into this not like by yourself or did you have partners along the way, investors or anything like that of the sort? I went in by myself, man. Uh, <laughs> yeah, man. Stupid me, man. Right. So, um, I looked at my wife. My wife had a really good job. She was, a she was an HR for a software engineer company and she was making in the six figures and, and we we're living okay. You know, like we're living all right. You know, it's just your normal, typical middle class. And when I presented this idea of starting my own concrete cutting business, my wife looked at me and she's by Lungi. So my wife looked at me and was like, uh, did you check, you know, the, uh, your, your, you know, the amount that's on the paperwork right there. And I was like, I, I get it, man. I know that it's going to be tough. And you know, my wife, she has a degree and she's like really smart. And so very like money savvy. So she, she puts everything in order for us. 
So the fact that, you know, she was able to, after a few months of me just prying and just kind of getting the feel for it, man, uh, I couldn't get alone on my own. So I had to, <laughs> I had to put my house up, man. So, and that was the biggest risk having to get a, a HELOC. And I don't know, a lot of people know what a HELOC is, but I had to get a HELOC loan and take the money that we, you know, the, the, the equity from the home and throw it into this business and take a gamble, a huge gamble. That's like going to Vegas and say, man, seven, here I come one time, you know, like, but man, we hit, we hit that seven, man. And we didn't look back. So, you know, I'm, I'm grateful for my wife, man, and, and, and her love and, and her patience, man, to, to allow me to do that, man, and allow me to take that chance and, and uh, roll that dice. So, yeah, man, it was just me alone. And, and are you to this point where you have people working with you, like employees? Well, I have, uh, right now I have helpers. So I'm not quite there yet. Um, we are getting a new fleet in January. That new fleet's going to be fitted just like this fleet here. So once that happens, then we'll start getting in, you know, bringing in employees and, I wanted to do it the smart way. I wanted to be in the green. A lot of people out there are, are like trying to push a lot faster than they, you know, that they really need to, but it keeps them in the red. And what I mean by that is green and finances, being in, in good standing with, you know, all your payments, making sure that you can pay not just your bills, but the people that come and help you. And then you feel comfortable at the end of the day after you pay those bills. That's the green. And so when I, when I started this business, I did it on my own for a year and I got to a point to where I need, you know, I needed a helper because my back was hurting. I was climbing in and out of holes, like deep holes, just to climb, you know, cut these doors. But, um, it, it, it kind of weighed on me. And then I, I got my brother involved and my brother was like, you know, here, my brother, man, he's, he's a big guy too. So my brother's like, uh, Sully, man, I'm just going to carry the water hose and uh, take the stuff from the truck and uh, bring it to you and you go do the work. And so it, it was good because then, uh, you know, my brother now, he, he's involved and, and he gets to see, you know, the dream that I've created. And and then uh, possibly one day, man, I can be able to help him and bless him and his family as well. So that's the whole point. And, and could you speak on the pros and cons in being in the concrete cutting businesses um, because uh, I've seen that you have worked with people and ended up uh, basically being screwed over not getting paid for your job. Could you elaborate on that? Yeah, yeah. So you're going to get a lot of general contractors, homeowners. I do a lot of my business in residential. I love residential work. It keeps us in, you know, in business. A lot of the commercial are not, I'm, I'm going to talk about the two differences between residential and commercial jobs. Commercial jobs are working in Dugway. That's a commercial job. But uh, residential is all homeowners and general contractors that are trying to provide this promise to these homeowners that they're going to get the job done at a timely manner. Uh, so when we get called to come do a job, the general contractor typically calls us to come and do the work. When we go do the work, they either have two things here. They'll tell you, hey, we'll make payment or, hey, the homeowner will make payment um, after you're done. So a lot of times I'm, me being who I am, I'm always like, I got you. You know, I work with a lot of Tongans and and Palangi. So when, when it comes to our people, I'm always like, I got you. Don't worry about it. You know, just pay me when you can, you know, like, and that's because I know our people. You know, sometimes they're late on their payments, you know, like, uh, but I give them time, you know, like I, I, I always, that's just who I am. That's, that's who I was ready to be. Uh, but when it comes to the Palangis, it's a different story. I'm like, I need it now. Where's the money right now? I need it now. So, but there, there are some, t the, the cons with that is when you're done with the work, you cook your screwed at the end. And that's because the miscommunication between the homeowner and the general contractor. And that miscommunication could be where the contractor didn't fulfill their full duties to that contract. That's why homeowners will stop payment. And then it stops my payment, which 
and they becomes a problem because then it's like, man, I could put a lien on your house. But at the end of the day, man, I'm not that type of person, man. I always let it slide. I, I, I save my piece on Facebook, man. And I'm just like, I'm just going to let it slide, man. So it is, man. There's the cons in that. The pros is the, the homeowners and general contractors typically do the marketing for you. So when they hire you to do a job and they promote your business, that's free promotion for you. You know, your, your business is getting out there and it's uh, being promoted by a general contract that's either known or being upcoming to, you know, be known. So uh, a lot of times when that happens, man, uh, that becomes a huge pro for, for the individual like myself. Uh, so I, I understand that, uh, like what made you decide to go in strictly with, uh, concrete cutting? Cause I know there's a construction is a wide array, you know? There's so many different specialties you can go into and they all pay fairly well. If you specialize, get, oh. if you get the certs and stuff to prove that oh. your work is, is guaranteed or up to a certain standard. So what made you choose concrete cutting? Uh, we get paid more to general contractors. That's why <laughs> we get paid way more. And, and, uh, uh, the amount of money that you put into the, to, to your businesses, you're going to get that back tenfold if you do it correctly. So yeah, when I saw the numbers, I didn't pass up that, that opportunity. I knew that number was higher than any other contracting, you know, like a, a entity in the business um, of construction. So concrete cutting business is one of, is probably, it's up there, man. It's up there in the pay range and it allowed me to retire my wife of that worked so hard, man, and her six figures, man. So yeah. If that answers your question, man, that that's the, one of the reasons why I joined on concrete cutting, man. Not because because I wanted to help people, because I wanted to pay my bills and and feel comfortable as well. So yeah. So after this, can I get like an itemized checklist of <laughs> what exactly I need? <laughs> <laughs> <Concrete> cutting? Because <laughs> I, I I could be semi pro concrete cutters, you know. So I mean, uh, no, but so like uh, with with that you getting into a market where there are very few Polynesians, um, how easy was it to, you know, promote your business at the start, at the get-go? I know you probably have picked up a couple of networking opportunities with other contractors you've worked with while you were apprenticing, but like when you went out fully on your own, became a competitor, how was it, how easy was it to promote? Did you go through the Polynesian community or did you just kind of word of mouth, called up the homies, hey, what's up? I just, you know. Let me know if you need anything cut. Hey, bro. It, it, you know, like, uh, dude, that was a good question, man. But, uh, my, my past is so the relationship with my old boss, uh, was a real tight relationship. And we'll tell you a little story about that. We were so tight that I was one of his best guys. And me and the Usto, shout out to my guy, uh, Julius Namulau T from Hawaii. Uh, we, we, we work for this guy. And we were hard workers, man. He knew it. He used us to a T, man. So um, when I decided to break off, I was going to use some of the contacts that uh, that I built with uh, with All Cuts Concrete. I was going to use some of that because I was like, that's the only way I can, you know, promote myself. Well, then I had a cease and desist that came and it was like, hey, you can't do that. So I was like, Holy shit. <laughs> how am I gonna like how am I gonna I just spent all this money? How the heck am I gonna get my you know like so one of the Usos told me so like use Facebook and I was not even using Facebook. I had like twenty friends on Facebook. I didn't even like to be honest with you, I didn't know how to use utilize Facebook, market that way. I was scared to do it because I was like, man, what if those ones look at me and be like, yeah, stop it. You know, like, so I was like, man, I don't want to do this, man. So I just took the chance, man. Uh, as a matter of fact, cool story, man. I go to, you know, I'm, I'm LDS. So in my ward, in my, my local ward, uh, one of my first ever work was from my neighbor and he's a landscaper. So we got talking and he knew I was working for All Cuts Concrete and he didn't want to give 
Mike, my old boss, any work because of how his attitude is. So he looked at me and says, hey, would you be willing to do this? And I said, sure, because I just quit my job. Like, I I just started my own, my own. He was like, oh, really? So and it was a big job. And I was, man, I was 50. I was scared because I was like, man, I'm going to do this. I got all the tools. Now I got to do it. So he was actually my first man. So I appreciate Chad Workman, uh, my neighbor. So he was actually my first. And then with that video, because I, I did a video of my whole work. And I added some cheesy freaking music on it. It was like some like like techno music. And my brother was like, tell me, nobody's going to watch your your videos with that techno music in the background. And I was like, I don't know how to do this. Shelly. And he was like, man, you got to do some hip stuff. You know, stuff that, you know, the old shows listen to, me, you know. So I was like, shit. So that first video caught eye to a lot of the tongues that I, I, I went on my mission with. A lot of the tongues that knew, you know, all of the cats that I, and so when they caught wind of that, that first video, they all hit me up on Facebook and said, Hey, Togo, man, can you come and uh, do this? I said, yeah, man. So to answer your question, Johnny, man, like it was all me in marketing, bro. Like I was, I was fifth as heck, man. I didn't, I didn't know what I was doing, but I'm glad I took the chance to learn it. And now I'm, I'm okay with it. I'm not great, but yeah, that's how I did it. So, so I like to uh, speak on issues that people can learn from, especially uh, experiences. So I'm going to bring up this topic of stereotypes. We understand that there are stereotypes out there, you know, Polynesians working in airlines, trucking, construction, and all that. What are your thoughts on that? Um, you, have you had any experiences of being uh, stereotyped? All the time, all the time, man. I, I don't know, man. When, when uh, you know, I, I can talk. So, when I get phone calls all the time from homeowners and general contractors, I change my tone sometimes. You know, like because I have to be more professional. So, I change my tone, and when they see me, they think I'm one of the employees that come to. So when they see me, they're like, hey. Yeah, you know, um, all pro concrete cutters, right? And I'm like, yeah, yeah, all, all pro concrete cutters. Yeah, I spoke with Thomas. And he's a great guy, you know, like, and I'm like, yeah, you're, you're talking to him. And they're like, what the heck? So I get a lot of like, and especially in Alpine, and I'm not saying it's like a racial thing, but like, I, I get this a lot when I'm in Alpine, Park City, and I go out and do these jobs for these spot lines, these rich, rich folks. They see me and they think I'm one of the employees. But once I tell them that I'm the owner of the company, you can tell they're like, I should have called someone else. You know, like I should have called Acor. I should have called Greens, you know, Concrete Cutting. And it's not because I can't do the work. It's because they're shocked that they see a brown guy who's dirty, has, you know, concrete slurry on his face. And they'll say, hey, I'm the owner. I'm going to cut your door. And so, but... At the same time, man, it, it, for me, it, I get a kick out of it, man, because I'm like, man, man, I don't care, man. When, you know, like that that makes me feel good, man, to see their face and to see the way they all shocked and like, oh, man, this guy's the owner. I'm talking to the owner of the company, but oh, yeah, there's a lot good of customer stuff. service voice. <laughs> I used to go to, I used to do, I used to work for Switch Wayfair. Switch it up real good, huh? <laughs> I used to do, I used to work for Wayfair. So I was on the calls all the times doing sales. And so, yeah, man, I know how to turn that, uh, turn that, that volume up when it comes to working with homeowners. Man, that, that stereotype. <laughs> I got a story close to that. So I'm a coach out here. And then one day, one, it was a game day. I'm tying my shoe by the scorer's table, right? And then my assistant coach, he wasn't really, he was a helper. He was a major for the clinic out here at the time. White guy, bald glasses, but he was, he was just like in the t-shirt and jeans and he's standing by, you know, the home bench. And then the away coaches, you know, two, two Palangi guys would come out and then they'd look over at me. I see them. Then they look over at him and then they go over to him and be like, oh, Hey coach, how's it going? <laughs> and then he's and then he immediately tells like, I'm not the coach. He is. And he, they point he points at me, you know, I'm I'm all dressed up and all that. But 
it was just fun to see it. Like, oh, like, yeah, man. Like, I, I smacked both these little guys. <laughs> but with that being said, going along with Coach speak, so from beginning uh, of your journey as an established businessman, your own business up until now, like how much have you say you improved in your craft and, you know, what are some, some of the things you look at that you feel like other people in your industry or your skill craft in particular don't look at that puts you sort of in the above them? Uh, yeah, man. Good question, man. I, I, I wouldn't say I'm above anybody. The challenge is always myself, you know, like in, in how I look at it and perceive it. I'm always learning, man. I used to be a coach, man. So I coached at Harriman High School when we won state. I, I, I stopped coaching, man. So I know the coaching world, uh, man. So, uh, but anyways, man, uh, when, when I'm constantly learning, I'm constantly researching, looking at other folks that are in my industry, in my trade. And when I see that how they're doing things, I'm always learning from those guys, especially the OGs up in the East Coast. Uh, you see guys in Milwaukee and in the Indianapolis, and those 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 are hard nosed concrete cutters over there, man. And when I watch those guys and I I see them on YouTube or I watch them because I follow them on Facebook, I always say, man, it's a new trick. I'm going to learn. I'm going to you know use that to you know my ability and, and to perfect my craft. So for me, the challenge is not me being better than All Cuts Concrete or Gemini. It's, it's, you know, what I did yesterday, I got to beat what I did yesterday. You know what I mean? Like, and that's a constant daily routine for me is I'm only as good as my last cut. And I always go off of that, you know, like, and so how I promote it and how I do it, I, I, I go off of the day and hopefully the next day tomorrow, will, you know, will be just as good. So yeah, that's how I live by now, I'm, I'm going to go a little bit off topic on this. Could you tell us about your, your parents and especially what their professions were? Yeah, so my mom was a social worker. My mom's name is Pupi Fondi Liu, and she was a social worker. She's from uh, Sabat. She's from Neuf. And so Neuf, yeah, that's, that's I almost say Neuf because that's one of the tiny guys' names. But she's from Savati, and uh, my dad's also from Niafu as well. So, yeah, they, uh, my mom was a social worker. So throughout my whole period of life, she uh, she was always around kids. She worked at the, you know, preschools and and uh, stuff like that. My dad was in security. Like every Samoan pops you see was in security, man. He was in the military. So my dad was also in the military as well as in the Army. And so after he did his time, uh, he went into security. He thought that was going to be the career for him. And, and uh, that, that was, that you know, like he, he did it until he retired. So, but yes, both my, my parents were very strong-headed folks, man. Salmon to a T, Salmon every time is, uh, son, when he's got cocoa here from the morning, I'm like, yeah. <laughs> You know, like, but it's the style more way, you know what I mean? Like, it's, you know, but that's the way that, you know, our parents is, you know, we, we make sure that they're taken care of as well. But, but yeah, man, my, my mom was a social worker and my dad was a, a lifelong uh, security guard, man. So he retired from that and now he's living the dream, just being home and eating all the kalo he wants. So, yeah, the reason why I brought up that question is because I like to, to give our parents that recognition to, to like, Hey, look at where your, your kid is at now. They're off doing bigger, better things. Right. It's we're not, I'm not trying to put a low value on what our parents did, but look at the big, the big picture here, uh, the journey, how far our parents have sacrificed for us to, to, for us to go out live out our own lives and start our own career paths. I want to add to that, man. Uh, very, very grateful for my parents, man. Uh, it wasn't easy though, man. Like, uh, just like any Samoan kid growing up, especially here in the States, you know, growing up in Compton, California, man, we lived in Park Village. It's a project. And in Park Village, man, we didn't have much, but we had a Samoan community. And one of the first Samoans to, you know, like the, to represent the Crips, you know, in the, you know, the gang area in that, in that local area. So, but it was just gang violence and, and 
growing up, my mom was strong in the church. She was an LDS member. My dad was a Methodist member. So my dad didn't believe in going to church. You know, he didn't believe in our church. He thought Joseph Smith was crazy. But that was the life, you know, like uh, it was separated. You know, it was tough because my mom, regardless of, you know, how, you know, hard my dad was, you know, my dad was smoking every day, drinking every day when he got off of work. And my mom didn't want that life for us. So my mom kept us going to Boy Scouts and, you know, like uh, all these things pertaining to church, you know, like in, we weren't good kids, you know what I'm saying? Like, so I feel bad for my mom, man. We made some bad choices growing up. But my mom always stuck to us, man. She made sure that we had food on the table for us. And and my dad was one of those guys that, the, you know, and, and maybe this is a topic that you guys can probably take on, you know, moving forward. But to be honest with you, man, like the title talk situation regarding, you know, families and the male figure in the family sometimes can perceive as like the greatest thing in the world, which to me in my experience was the worst thing in the world because my dad didn't care about us as much as he should have. So, and, and that was one of the things because my dad was so stuck with loving the family, you know, like his family, his Fasamo family in Samoa and making sure they were taken care of. But he failed to forget that he had his own family here in the States. And that's the hardest thing, man. When I, I still talk to my mom about this. I, you know, I, I, I used to tell him, you know, tell him all the time. I was like, man, dad is taking trips to Samoa. And here we are. We can't, we're eating side mini and baby kaki and all this stuff. And, and, you know, my dad was, my, but my dad was one of the guys in the family that everybody looked up to. You know, my dad brought people from his village to come here to America. And so I'm very grateful for my dad and, and what he's done for his family. But then again, man, there's the part of me that's like, if only you did that, that took that same energy to put it on us, us kids, your kids, uh, we probably would have been in a better place. So, yeah, that's how I feel about it. Man. So, Hey, my mom is the social worker for Savati too. <laughs> <laughs> Now, but you mentioned you had a brother just real quick. How many uh, siblings do you have? Uh, it's, it's nine of us. My dad had four older siblings um, from a previous marriage. And then there's five of us from my mom and my dad. But I still represent, you know, my, my older four siblings. I still call them my, my brothers because we're, we're tight like that. My brothers and sisters. So it's nine of us total. And where do you fall in? You the middle child? I'm the middle child, yeah. I'm the, the middle, middle child. child. <laughs> yeah. I'm the middle child. I'm the I'm the Kamkai, man. I'm the one that, you know what I'm saying? Like my mom would say, You're gonna be a bad kid, man. And I was like, you watch what this bad kid gonna do, man. So shout out to my moms. Hey, uh, before your mission, did you well, let me just say shout out to the Yate community, especially those back in the eight oh eight given giving, you know, the young Usos and, and Tokos and all of them a chance to save up for their mission, you know, and, and giving them an idea of what hard work is like, but always being loving. So shout out to you guys. But uh, before your mission, did you have any experience in the construction area at all with working? What kind of type of jobs were you doing? Man, I was working at Carl's Jr., bro. I was working. I was flipping burgers, man. I, I was flipping, bro. I was a I was I was good. I was good at it, man. My wrist, my wrist game was I was good at flipping burgers, man. Yep. You know, like in the eighth in in Long Beach, one of the first places Carl's Jr., man, uh one of my uh one of my uh one of the older ladies, T rest in peace, man. She was uh she was one of the ladies that hired me. And man, we used to, used to always tell us, yeah, when you have enough you know, just go and eat the, you know, hamburger that's in the thing, you know, like we, we make our own stuff. So yeah, I was flipping burgers before, man. I didn't have any experience in the construction world. We've, we've had a lot of, uh, entrepreneurs on our podcast and, and I really love to, to hear their stories because they continue to inspire us, especially, uh, 
now that Behind the Love Lava is now, we're now considered entrepreneurs for entering the merch business. Um, what would you say to our listeners, for those who are wanting to start their own business, especially along the lines of what your industry is, what would you say to them? Uh, learn it. Learn what you love, man. I, I love what I do, man. When I found that I had a passion for this, I fell in love with it, man. And so, no, you know, like whatever you love or you're passionate about, take that opportunity and go for it, man. Uh, it's never too late. Man, I did it at 36 years old. You know, like, uh, <laughs> man, somebody told me that, hey, you started late. I was like, yeah, but I'm here and I ain't going to leave. So, you know what I'm saying? Like 36, took me 36 years to understand that I needed to take that opportunity to put my family in a position where I don't have to worry about finances anymore. Like that was, yeah, that, that right there was one of the things that I can tell, you know, I just tell the next person, Hey, do it. Don't wait for it, man. And if you wait, you're going to wait like me. And then it's going to, maybe it'll be too late, you know, because timing is everything. So how often do you run into, uh, you know, I know as a Polynesian community, once one of us, gets into uh an industry or a certain kind of industry you know you always get the the friends and family show up you know hey you know by the way since uh you're in concrete cutting i have this uh i need this part cut out in my foundation i was wondering if you could if you're available and uh the the family hookup please does that happen to you quite often since you've gotten into it the family hookup man there's no family hookup man i'm sorry man to all the listeners out there, man, like, you can ask my boy, uh, Alan Total Pie from Compton. He knows I did a job for him. I told him there was no discounts, man. But it was all love, man. Uh, the fact that he understood, you know, where I stood. And I think it's really how you present yourself, man. Um, you know, a lot of people start to follow you when they know that you're really legit. You know, especially the guys that hate you the most. They'll follow you, too. You know, like, they'll follow you. They don't care. You know, like... But I tell people all the time, my price is my price. I ain't going to change. I mean, if I did, I'd do it for everybody. Then I wouldn't be in business. It, it is what it is. I mean, uh, my 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 service of love for these guys that want an opportunity is always, hey, man, if you want to learn this, I'll, I'll train you. I'll teach you. Then you can make your own money and you can charge your own costs. But yeah, man, there's no family discount. Even the tongue is no. I'm more expensive than all the guys they used to use, man, but they keep using me because they know the love that I have for those guys. So, and it, and it goes both ways. That's good. Cause I'm really trying to push this narrative for, especially cause that's the biggest thing that I believe hurts the, the Polynesian community here in, in Utah. I've seen enough restaurants, some one stores come up and go, I've been here since 2000 and I see them pop up and then a couple of years they're back in the gutter. Too many, you know, the friends and family come in. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, let me get a plate. Let me get a plate. Let me get a plate. And it starts off small like that. You know, I, I've always been a firm believer that if if you're a new business, if you're starting out a new business, families and friends should be paying double your price. They should be because they're, they're when they come out to support, support is paying full or more. You guys are really, you know, you can't expect them. Now, you know, you, 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 you go big. Now all of a sudden you're you're national and you go public and then now you're making in the billions, you know, magic B word. Maybe then, you know, can you slide me at least a couple grand to cut my freaking <laughs> it's leaky. Come on, look it up. But you know, uh, but when you're starting off and you're in your first t five, ten years and you haven't really caught a foothold, the if, if you when you support, you're supposed to pay. Work it up. Yeah. You know. I agree, man. Uh I don't know if you guys ever ate a Pacific Seas. Mm -hmm. Um, but they've been in business for 20 years and then they're still, they're still in business. And to be honest with you, man, I know the family very close. So shout out to those guys, man. Uh, much love and offers to those guys, man. But, uh, you know, I learned a lot from guys in this industry. They're going to get a lot of Tongans and South ones will reach out to you and say, Hey, come on, man, we're brothers. And I tell them all the time, if you were my brother that you will pay my cost. If you're my brother, then you'll pay my cost because the type of quality work I'm going to get to you is if I cut my own house. That's the type of work I'm going to provide to you. So a lot of people, 
kind of, you know, so I, I've had a lot of jobs, you know, like uh, get pushed and uh, a lot of jobs, you know, where contractors went with other folks because my price was too high, but I never wavered. I never wavered. I, I still, st st you know, strong to, and as a matter of fact, Changed the game in Utah. So as a cutter, now everybody's running my damn price. I need to go higher now. So it's like everybody's running my price now because all these guys, a core, they're like, who's this all pro concrete cutter who's running up the damn cars? Now we all got to be on the same page. So shout out to me for doing that because I created that crap, man. So Kudos to me, man. I was I was like, damn, dude, now everybody's doing my call. So it is what it is. Oh, so we gotta thank you for the inflation, huh? <laughs> <laughs> You're the reason pay, why they're I, all expensive now. <laughs> I gotta pay for this sign right here, man. I still making payments for this sign right here. Is that the Salt Lake City skyline? <laughs> <laughs> Well, 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 we're doing a shout out, shout out to Pacific Seas and Cousins Kitchen. I did some food reviews with them. A uh, shout out to Sosafina, Sosafina Movie, the directors and writers. Shout out to THC Cyrus. Shout out to uh, uh, Matai Watches, Parker Films. Shout out to Yosamo and all <clears throat> our previous guests. We love you guys. Keep on doing, keep the grind. Well, I mean, uh, one of the things I like to say is I'm very familiar with the area that you came from in, in Park Village, Compton. I think they changed the name of the place now. Yeah, it's did, not Park yeah. Village anymore. I but, know. Uh, it, you know, to see you come from there and you come here and make a better life for yourself. I wouldn't say that it was impossible to do it from out there because I know quite a few people from Park Village that have come here and have built a life for themselves here. And they're doing fairly well for themselves. You know what I mean? It's it, It's always good to see and hear other than, um, you know, getting involved and being part of the system. And so kudos to you, you know, for all the hard work and then for finding a good team to get you to get you where you wanted to be. I know it's, it's hard getting starting a business. Um, I, I've always told myself I'm, I'm not the type. I, I, I'm not the type to run a business. I could be the best employee you've ever had, but I cannot run a business. You know, I can run the numbers for you as long as my name is not. To me, it has to do with the responsibility. If I know that my signature is required on all of those documents, you know, I get a little nervous, like, all right, what if I mess this up? Or what if he messes it up? Now I get screwed my name on it. You know, it's always hard, but it's a hard journey. But to see guys like you come out on top, you know, when you, you get started with the amount of capital needed to, to go into it and then you come out on top, you know, it's, it's, it's a good uh, story to push out there, especially to people in our community who uh, see our podcast or see any of this or even listen to any of the, the, the dumb things that come out of our mouths, you know, when they see that and it gives them a little bit of hope or maybe an idea of something else aside, you know, I've always been, I'm, I'm a firm pusher of, we need more Polynesian dentists and pilots and uh, maybe some orthodontists, uh, maybe some foot doctors, you know, you, we, we've praised this whole for full business, you know, or you got to freaking step on a broken ankle to make it better. So let me get some like podiatrists or some you know, some ortho surgeons, you know, <laughs> some poly. Yeah, maybe we can uh, we can like prove the scientific fact of why if we said that works really good or sasalapa works in curing sicknesses and and why the 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 samorfo is like the best thing in the world for massages. It's it's uh, but it's good to see everybody expanding out and so now we got a, a concrete cutter in the mix and so. Yeah, it, it's good to see, and I congratulate you for it. Too much, man, too much. Hey, you know what I think? I think Johnny just has a fetish for teeth and flying, because you've mentioned this many times before, dentists and I, I'm just pilots. saying, said, you, know, you know what I'm trying to do is, uh, because eventually I'm going to retire in American Samoa. I'm from American Samoa, and I'm going to go back. And I'm trying to make sure that all the amenities I have here in Utah, I get back there when I go back to Samoa. <laughs> so I'm going to need, you know, my dentist, you know, that I got to go to that's down the street from my house. I'm going to need a foot doctor because I know everybody in Samoa got bad feet because ain't nobody wear no shoes. I'm going to need my pilot to fly me down there. Uh, shout out to my uh, my cousin, Nicole. He's a pilot for Hawaiian Air now. Uh, his name is Lincoln Molinga. So, you know, 
big ups to him. But it's one of those things, you know. And Yo Samuel, Yo Samuel's a pilot for United. So you know, it's it's you know, there's different things. It's it's good to see us branch out. And I know a lot of them, as uh, we have existing Polynesians in the trade. It's just you know a lot of people don't talk about them because they're kind of in the background. And I think they belong in the front with everyone else. You know, they belong in the front, pushing, pioneering, just another avenue for the youth to explore something that's possible or something we didn't think about getting into at first. You know, we always, I know a lot of us Polynesians, we come to Utah. I know because I, I, I'm half Tongan, so all of my Tongan side is here in Utah, or most of them. And so when I first got here at, you know, I was like 12, 13 years old, it's Yate. You know, first thing we get is Yate, 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 Yate. My first job was doing Yate, Rainbow Construction in Logan. It wasn't, it wasn't an official job because it was just my uncle paid me in a, bu- a case of meat and a hundred bucks for the summer. <laughs> <Play months. laughs> for, the, for the whole summer. <laughs> but, you know, it was just, it, that was, that was life. You know, it taught us a, a value of hard work because I would see some of my uncles, you know, they, they, in, they were, we were doing roofing, we we're cutting trees, we we're doing driveways and it was just everything. And you see these guys climbing up and down running. Like I was running shingles up the roof, up the ladder. You know, one person be up in a tree cutting and we're just over there just gathering all these branches together. Then people are knowing different types of trees. Like, oh, that's willow. That's that. Right? There's oak. That was like, oh, it's a tree. It's a tree. You know, it's, it's all the trees. But, you know, they get in here and they get that business mentality, that that mindset. And they start pushing the, the value of hard work, of trying and not being afraid to fail. And then it's always good to find yourself a good accountant to budget yourself. <laughs> you know, all oh, snap that big, that big bid we just did, you know, paid us 30 K time to go buy the bins. What about the next bid? <laughs> you know, It's always good to maintain that business sense. And so, yeah, we need, we need more. Uh, I think Samuel doesn't have uh, an amusement park, so we need some amusement park engineers and stuff. Yeah, I'm trying to build up my <laughs> Samoa. Go back to American Samoa. Build it up for making it nice. Here's uh, Samoan dentist AJ Lowell out in Arizona now. And then also Justin Tony Sala. He's, I think he just did a lift for, I don't know, USA lifting. He's a, he's a big dude studying little teeth. So I don't know. Maybe you can convince one of those guys to go back home. You know? Hey, Justin, if you're hearing this, I should be back in the island, but like about five or 10 years from now, just <laughs> waiting for the kids to graduate. <laughs> so Thomas, I like to, I like to ask our guests this questions because I'm, I, I like to learn. I, I want to continuously uh, improve on our podcast. Do you have a, a question for us before we close it? I don't know, man. I think you guys are doing super good right now, man. Uh, it's my first podcast. I've, I've watched a lot of podcasts. I'm, I'm a big fan of Joe Rogan. Have you guys seen Joe Rogan? Big fan of Joe Rogan. So I've seen a lot of podcasts, and you guys are not far from it, man. I I, I think this is more towards, you know, like, doing you guys horn too, man. I think you guys are doing great, man. Just keep up the good work and make sure, man, uh, you guys reach out to more pilots. There's more People like me, there's a lot of us out there that need to be on here and need to be on you guys' uh, Behind the Lava Lava, man. This is a great name. I've said it, man. I, I've told everybody out there, bro, this is this is probably the best marketing name for any sophomore podcast or any Polynesian podcast because it just represents who we are as a whole, man. Behind the Lava Lava, man. What's behind there? See all the Kenyans over there? Like, hey, what's behind over there? That picture over there I want to see. But anyways, man, it catches the eyes of, you know, all of us people, man, and it brings us and unites us together, man. I appreciate the love and support that you guys have for me and, and my small business, man, and we're continuing to represent you guys as well. And and so, yeah, man, I, I don't have any question, man. It's just just more of keep up the great work, man, and keep doing your business day, man. And so, yeah. Well, what I want to know is... Uh... What's Johnny's definition of what's behind the lava lava? What, what, what do you think about, you know, when we voted on the names, I want to hear what you were thinking. Cause I know what behind the lava lava means to me. Cause I, I brought the name forth and everyone voted on the, on the cleanest name for the podcast. What, what's Johnny thinking of? Hello, Johnny. 
<laughs> I was thinking uh, we had so much more better options than than behind the lava lava. There were some really good ones in there. Obviously, all of it was not safe for work. <laughs> <laughs> you get you ask a bunch of uh, uh, prior service Marines and maybe a, a, an army guy what <laughs> what you want to name a podcast best of full Samoans. It ain't gonna be <laughs> it's exactly what you're thinking. What is behind the level of <laughs> So but yeah, I guess I guess uh the mascot helps, you know oh, change it off, you know, push push <laughs> the, the, the attention somewhere else. But I, <laughs> is that it's a good name? Chief? It's is a good the name. That's yeah. the talking chief right there. Yeah, that's the talking chief. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he's got the cool cool in the foyer. He's the talking chief. <laughs> yeah, but, and uh, yeah. and then for our listeners, just to wipe out everything Johnny said, behind the lava lava really means is what's behind the person, what's behind that curtain. So you want to tell the stories of everyone. Any age, young, old, poor. <laughs> Man, you guys are making me laugh. So then we chose, you know, an order, Talking Chief, because it, in all of us, you know, we have that individual who wants to, to talk, who wants to speak. We re it represents us on a speaking level, telling our stories and, um, uh, Man, my mind just went blank. So that's that's basically what it is. If I, you know, just with this one thing, man, shout out to my, you know, to my talking chief, man. My talking chief, my wife, man, she always interrupts me when I try to finish a sentence or when I'm at my mom's house and she's over there, she completes my sentences. So, yeah, shout out to the talking chief of my family. But, yeah, man, uh, like I said, man, the name is, I appreciate it, man. The name is great, man. Uh, and I, I, I can only imagine the conversation you guys had when trying to figure out a name. I can only imagine. But I know it comes from a good place, man. And we also got to represent, man. And shout out to Tosa Moore, man, for you know representing us on the big stage, man. You know I'm a big rugby fan, man. And I, Sal Moore, man, that was that was massive. Even some of the Tungians. Here in uh, the 801 um, in Utah, man, represented, man, and came out and supported, man. So shout out to everybody that uh, all the Samoans stand out, man. Every Pacific Island is the Fijians, man. I think that, and not just that, man, with your, you know, with this podcast too, it can go a long way and and bringing those guys on, on board to have a conversation and, you know, and some gossip, you know, you guys can get from those guys too. So, yeah. So is that a is that a challenge? So I'm a, I'm assigned Johnny to invite uh, the twelve Samoa members on our podcast. Are you up for the assignment, Johnny? Oh, that's gonna be nice. I'll, I'll get to it next year. We'll see. That. <laughs> I'm gonna call I'm gonna call my peoples to get with their peoples and see what we'll see what we got going. Oh, and uh, I want to see if I get Luai on there. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and a big big ups to uh, uh Korea and. Japan for for making it to the knockout rounds on the on the uh, in the soccer World Cup. So yeah, that's like it's that's football. comparison. That's yeah, that's comparison <laughs> of Samoa and Tonga in in the knockout rounds, right there. They're the underdogs. I got one last question. All right, so Thomas, thanks for joining us. Awesome having you, man. Like entrepreneur, you know, hustling straight out of Compton and going along with stereotypes. We never would have guessed because we don't hear, you know, that West Coast accent, that slang, you know, hey, cuz, you know, Park News cuz, PVC. <laughs> but it's awesome. Even though it's been 36 years, you don't, even, you don't even look that age, man. Even when, you know, the years you said you were on your mission, don't even look that age. It's crazy. But the question I have for you is, for all pro concrete cutting in five years, what are your goals for all pro? Where do you hope to see them? And also <clears throat> as a father, being the successful businessman and continuing on his path, what are your, your goals in that sense as well? 
Well, you guys are going to hear it first, man. So I got some things shaky for next year, man. Uh, next year, we got a transportation company, man, that we're going to start live, man, with celebrities in uh, Hollywood. It's going to be an all-pro transportation company, man, that my, my cousin up in uh, Arthur, California, man, he's going to be running it, but it's going to be under our trademark name. Uh, so we're going to we're gonna be doing that. And we're also going to be doing uh, classes where, you know, you don't hear a lot of trade, you know, uh, cutting in this part of the world. There's a lot of the East Coast doing massive training camps of uh, learning the trade and stuff like that. So next year, we're going to start up a Utah board of concrete cutting, and we're going to get folks to come in and be trained and, and learn how to do it. That way, those guys can, you know, either join a company for a couple of first years and get certified and then, and then go off on their own. That's, that, that's the main goal is I want to give opportunities for those guys to go off on their own. So in the next five years, man, we're, we got some big things rolling. I'm hoping by that time we have released four fleets, then we'll be a legitimate hundred million dollar company. That's where we want to be. That's my goal. Uh, my goal is also to fly out to Australia and open up a first salmon concrete cutting uh, business out there because there's a lot of concrete cutting Polynesians over there that's working for the man. And why not work for this man? So, um, and, and, and have the, the Polynesian entity to run that business there because there's a lot of people in Australia. It's Australia is massive. You got Sydney, Melbourne, all these big cities that are doing a lot of concrete cutting out there. It's actually the biggest, it's bigger than here in America. So I would love to tap into that business and fly out there and connect with uh, some of those shows and tongues out there uh, to open up uh, our first all pro concrete cutters in the Aussie world. Uh, so yeah, man. Uh, and then for my kids, my daughter's already wanting to be my boss. So she's always wanted to be my video, like in my videos and saying, daddy, can you know I say concrete cutters and not you? So I'm so just so you know, for a lot of you guys in the business, I pay my daughter thirteen thousand five hundred a year and then I write that off that that money comes back to me every year. So a lot of you folks that are not business savvy, pay your kids. Pay your kids because it's gonna come right back. So all my videos of when my daughter's on there, she's getting paid. She doesn't know that, but she's getting paid. <laughs> but that's the business 101 for you guys who are trying to you know start up a business that be financially set you guys have to know your numbers and do it the right way and if you guys need my help and i'm always there man my door is always open appreciate that we might uh call on you here pretty soon <laughs> like i need you to run some numbers that's amazing uh thomas and we wish you great fortune on your future endeavors and we truly appreciate you for joining our uh, session today. To our listeners, thank you for tuning into our episode. We appreciate you taking the time to join us. Uh, please share your experience with us or suggest a topic you would like us to talk about. And check out All Pro Concrete Cutters on social media. If you need <clears throat> someone to cut your concrete, check them out. They are based here in Utah. So thank you very much. Tofa soifua.